Well, uh, the PTO Mystery Pro has spoken. I'm washed up. I'll never, ever contend for another uh, world championship again. So I'm going to take my second place uh, trophy from last year, actually. Not even been a year. I mean, St. George, was it really a world champs, right? Like, it wasn't really real. Christian's not the real world champ. Come on. Just throw it here in the garbage. No need that anymore. Instead, take out my real profession, which is professional YouTube. Outside, inside, we don't stop. Go, go, worldwide, we don't stop. From the bottom to the top, we don't stop. From the birth to the block, we don't stop. Outside, inside, we don't stop. Global, worldwide, we don't stop. From the bottom to the top, we don't stop. From the birth to the block, we don't stop. I'm about to blow like a fully loaded tech nine. Turn the lights out, go and tell them bedtime. Gotta steal the show everywhere we go. Got a super ego, but not a hero. Usually we uh, see you at Aqua Bear. Yes, usually you do. Correct. But here I am, long course meters, baby, just like the real swimmers. I'm gonna become a real swimmer now. All jokes aside, you are swimming long course now. Why, why are you doing that? Chris Lieto told me it'd make me better at swimming if I started swimming long course. And I just do what people tell me, so. No, well, yeah, par partially, but. Um, the big one? I've avoided swimming long course my entire life. Back home, now long course is rare here. This is actually a new thing. I don't know who organized this, but long course four days a week now, which is amazing. When you tell them your times, like in our videos, people read our times, they're like, oh wow, you're starting to swim. That's because they think I'm doing it in long course meters. <laughs> Logged very few, maybe 100,000 total long course meters in my whole career. All right, let's lap Trevor. 16 times. Outside, inside, we don't stop. Go, go, worldwide, we don't stop. From the bottom to the top, we don't stop. From the first to the block, we don't stop. Outside, inside, we don't stop. Go, go, worldwide, we don't stop. From the bottom to the top, we don't stop. From the first to the block, we don't stop. Hey, look, we don't, we don't, we don't stop. So I'm not coming here swimming aimlessly. Uh, I had a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Coach yesterday at Aqua Bear. So, you know, what is coaching? What is uh, what is technique? <clears throat> uh, I I personally, as someone who's been swimming now for um, 13 plus years, trying to get better at it, searched high and low, been to many coaches, etc. Uh, there's no way to just do technique and there's no way to just do intensity. You have to basically do them both always at the same time, in my opinion, for a guy like myself. I basically just spent 4,000 almost straight meters focusing on trying to get some more pressure. Coach says to keep my hand perpendicular to the sides of the pool. Um, and so that, I basically just focused on that and my times were quite good and my heart rate was quite low. So. It never ends though. It never ends. We don't stop. Global worldwide, we don't stop. From the bottom to the top, we don't stop. From the first to the block, we don't stop. Extremely specified for middle distance. Take the Norwegian method. Or whatever you want to call it. Why do you think you've become known as the indoor training guy? Why have I become known as the indoor training guy? I don't know if I'm known as the indoor training guy anymore. I, I definitely got into it, like, on the early side of things. The real, the first person to really do a lot of indoor training, I think, was Lindsay Corbin. She was doing a lot of uh, trainer work and stuff. And then Andy Potts also did a ton of indoor training, I believe. But, uh... I've done a lot of indoor training as well, predominantly as most Canadians do for approximately six months, or anyone for that matter who lives in poor triathlon climate. Uh, yeah, about six months worth, because I remember actually I was in Hamilton running on the rail trail, and I was, I don't know, about 10K from home, and I slipped on a piece of ice, rolled my ankle, and had to walk home 10K in the freezing cold. And I was like, this is stupid. Like, the quality is bad and it's dangerous. 
I also been hit by cars many times. And uh, yeah, so then I started to, when you first start to go indoors, of course, it's challenging. Um, because it's different, anything's different, new stimulus. So it's, it always presents its own challenges. So you have to adapt to that. Then once you adapt to it, uh, I mean, you'll come to find that it is, I'd say, better than outside. And so, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, well, then you start to see actually that there's, there's, there's a lot of benefits that you can use that you can't really do as well outside. And one of those, of course, now, uh, not now, but for a long time, has been just uh, consistency and the ability to have your own little science lab. So now that I have my air conditioner up here, this got pretty hot in here last year, so I wasn't able to do it as good as I should have been able to do it. Uh, but now that I have my own dedicated air conditioner in here, I can get this room down. I should be able to keep it at a 70 year round. And so it becomes its own little uh, controlled environment. And so definitely one thing I've observed now living in, ex you know, pretty extremely hot environment two years in a row, two seasons in a row, is your fitness goes up, 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 up until about uh, mid-May. And then when the temperature gets up to over 100 every single day, then you're, well, you have no idea what's happening to your fitness anymore because like all your numbers go down. You seem like you're getting, you seem like you're training really hard because you are, uh, but the numbers go down and you have really no, not much capacity to analyze where you really stand in normal racing or, you know, training conditions. So uh, I made that mistake twice. Now I go back to my roots this year, which will be to spend, even when I lived in Windsor and I have my beautiful indoor training space, uh, even in the summertime when it was quite nice, I still spent tons of time training indoors for that very reason, that it was a nice controlled environment. I remember back down in the basement in Windsor, even in the summer, it was usually 68 degrees, just pure, perfect training environment. And so you always have to think about specificity. Of course, if you're gonna do a very hot race, then you need to do some form of heat preparations. But as I learned and I wrote blog posts about in 2015, when I got hardcore into heat training, you should never really, not often anyway, should you miss mix heat and speed. You know, you're sacrificing speed for heat and you're making your speed both slower and more taxing than it needs to be. The muscle, you know, the muscle uh, load is less because you can't exert as well in the heat. The cardiac load is higher. Now having kind of a bunch of lactate testing also, the lactate will be higher. And, uh, and yeah, you don't want to do that to yourself. Uh, maybe as you get very close to a hot race, you can start to do a little bit out there because you do have to mentally handle being able to train out in the heat. But anyhow, uh, Colin and I, and I think a bunch of other dudes, tried to train here all summer, you know, leading into Kona and Dallas last year. And you'll notice that every single dude who trained in Tucson, which is extremely hot and extremely difficult, did horrible in Kona. And I don't think that there that's a coincidence. I think we all destroyed ourselves. You see it quite often. Guys go to Kona, I've done it myself. Uh, go to do Kona camps three weeks out do a whole bunch of outdoor training in the conditions Think that you're getting fit and then you do the race and you can't even do what you're doing in practice I believe a large part of that is due to deep-seated fatigue uh, That comes from doing too much training out in the heat and so anyhow uh, I'm rambling but uh, the beauty one of the many beauties of having a beautiful indoor space is that you can control it, turn it into a science lab and be very diligent with the adaptation process and be certain that you are adapting to the demands that you're trying to hit on race day. Single leg again. One more now. Light work, buddy. Hold on, let's get back in. You gotta get back in. Otherwise, you didn't do it. Now my hard one with the wall. You better be ready to catch me. All right. Ooh, that, that wall is right there. There it is, right over there. And success.
This uh, pain cave used to look a little different. Yeah, we had to update it big time. Originally, um, well, I just had this vent into here, and like I said, it's like 80 degrees in here in the summer, if not hotter. Really. AC going full tilt, still 80 degrees in here. So yeah, we had to put that in, paint it all, new floors, get the plug for the woodway. Uh, and then, this was actually, I did have this vision. You guys then took it and, and made it into uh, like a work of art, but I had a vision to have the sponsors as, as just little uh, um, stickies, Velcro sticky things on the wall. And, uh, but anyways, this turned out like a hundred times better than it, I could ever have imagined. Swim bowl right here. It's up to 20 or bust. Whoa, whoa, don't be looking at any of my stuff here. Oh, what about, what about, what about out. the race schedule? Zoom out. That race schedule was so totally incorrect. Final session of the day, you got a nice woodway, you can do it on that. Um, I love the woodway. Not hating on woodway at all. But the woodway is industrial grade. I mean, that thing is like 500 pounds, rock solid, no give, no nothing. Love the treadmill, great, great for speed work. But one of the definite benefits of using a treadmill is actually the forgiving aspect of it, the joint preservation aspect of it. And for that, I use the old school. Uh, Back home in Windsor, I had an old Nordic Track C1750. Don't mind the mess. And I uh, have one here too. This one's a newer one. Uh, but anyway, great treadmill. Why though? Why do you run on this one? This one has what's known as the runner's flex. It's extremely springy. Literally, it has springs two inch springs that uh, every step they come in, you can turn it off if you want, but I've got it turned on. <coughs> and every step, the thing depresses nearly two inches. So it's like very, uh, it actually is quite a difficult run because of that fact, because you don't have as much like uh, flyback from the ground but uh, it's really good on your joints, really good. So I could probably run two hours on here with the taxation of maybe like an hour of outdoor running. But still the cardiovascular load, like outside. Is this a sponsored uh, post? Oh no, not at all. I've never had a treadmill sponsor, unfortunately, even though I've gone through many, many treadmills. <laughs> yeah, these ones, uh, I mean, they're not industrial grade. <laughs> can you can you these go to ones, your local? These ones, if you try doing speed work and stuff on these, they break like with certainty. So you do a combo of what all three running styles? Um, well, I got the shuffle in Kona. I've got the limp usually, <laughs> and then I got good running when I'm running as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> I mean, you run on the track, you run on the woodway. I run on the track, I run on the trail. I run on the woodway and I run on the Nordic track for any very forgiving treadmill. To avoid injury. It's all about avoiding injury. You can't win a race if you're not on the start line. Remember, put the logo to the camera. You're learning quick. YouTuber right here. Morton, Morton.com. Where can you buy your Mortons? Thefeed.com, baby. Hey. Man, you are an influencer now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, another question for you, actually. How do you know your speed differences from treadmill to treadmill? Uh, well, I wear the stride pod. Now, stride pod for me definitely reads a lot lower when I run inside. And I've messaged stride about this, and they wanted to do an analysis and stuff on my files. And I was like, I ain't got time for that. <coughs> um... But anyways, it's consistent, the difference. So I'd say it's about 30 to 40 watts differential inside to outside on a treadmill. 
And so, but the nice part is it is consistent that way, indoor versus outdoor. So I target a round on these Super Chill recovery runs about 260. If I did that same run outside at that same heart rate, same intensity, I'd probably be about 290. But the nice part is I can go to a treadmill. For instance, I remember my last time <coughs> um, coming home from the Collins Cup. And I went down before we, we had our flight um, out of Amsterdam. And I just went down, did a half hour run on the treadmill. And the beauty is some random treadmill in Amsterdam. And I was able to know where my intensity was relative to all the other treadmills that I've run on. Done and dusted? Nope. 34 minutes recovery. The more I run, the better I feel. For Th sure. 34 minutes? A lot of people OCD would have went to uh, no. 35. Yeah, that's why I went to 34. Because that gets me to 175 minutes in three days. Well, <coughs> before we close this video out, what do you love the most about it? The ringer's off, please, while we're on the set. <laughs> what Goodness you... sake, people. Uh-oh. What do you love the most about uh, indoor training? Um, for instance, when I was sick, well, I'm still coming back, but when I was sick sick, um, I went out and I was doing a bunch of running in the golf course, the local golf course here. Really challenging. It's just so hard to control the intensity, uh, you know, outside for various reasons, windy, hot, undulations, uh, turn, twist and turns, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you need that too, but um, the beauty of the indoor, the biggest cool part about the indoor is it is a science lab. I mean, it's where you do science testing. And so if you like data and you like, you know, understanding how your progression is going, then indoor is a place to certainly hone in on that. You can, you can hone in, it is, it is a lab. You can turn it into a lab if you really want to. And um, I am semi turning it into a lab for sure.